The election results in Europe and France and in the UK are crazy, probably going to be mirrored in the US by their own crazy elections. Why are people getting so crazy at this point in time? Hello, everyone. I'm Dr. Chris Martins, and today we're going to discuss that exact thing. But let's start with France right away. So in France, we hear, see here Suleiman Amand crowing about the idea of saying the far right got booted out in today's French elections. We're going to talk about what actually happened. The good people of France took to the streets tonight to celebrate their victory. Solidarity with anti-fascists is how this is being characterized. Obviously, there are a lot of people here who are uh, pretty riled up, pretty happy. Look like a lot of young French people there. Got a nice chant going. That's an anti-fascist flag, which looks like a fist smashing a Nazi symbol. So that's how it's being portrayed, at least on one side. But look what he said here. The far right got booted out in today's French elections. Now, let's talk about what those elections were, because the truth of the matter is, according to Peter Sweden, which is true, Marine Le Pen, so-called far right wing, the people, I suppose, that would be represented by that swastika for some reason. I think far right means anybody who doesn't agree with what the left happens to think now you're you must be for nazis and swastikas then that's how they think um marine le pen's right-wing party the front um the national front which is fn front national national in france uh got 10 million votes but only 142 seats in their representative parliamentary system the socialist communists just got 7 million votes but ended up with 180 seats. Macron's party got even fewer votes at 6.7 million, ended up with 159 seats. The right actually got the most votes yet lost. How did this happen? Well, it happened because the elections were shenanigans. They were rigged. They were uh, they, they did something um, very much to engineer that outcome. So it Macron knew that Le Pen's party was going to win. They were going to get the most votes. So what they did right before, in between the snap vote and the actual election, is they took, if there were three parties running, right, there was Macron's party, there was the the socialists, and then there was the um, the national front, right? Those three parties, they had a whole bunch of people drop out of Macron's party so that now there's only two to vote for. And ostensibly, all the people who would be voting for Macron would now be voting for these other people, the socialists, the, who, the far left, the ultra far left, they're, com they're communists too. So um, because of that, dropping those 200 people out, a lot of votes, instead of splitting it three ways, now got split just two ways. And of course, that ended up rigging the thing. I'm still not clear how it is that you end up with 10 million votes, but only get 142 seats. That takes extra jury rigging um, and election rigging. Now, this is the nature of the beast. Right. So we know that for as long as there have been elections, there have been election shenanigans. Right. Because power does not give up power. That's the one thing we know about humans. It doesn't matter where they come from or what language they speak. When they get into power, they like to stay there and they will do anything they possibly can to stay there. Now, France actually has paper ballots, so they actually have verifiable results, which means that in order to rig things, you have to go through lots of extra shenanigan steps, which you can see portrayed right here. Now, this is what's interesting is that even after the far left extremists won, they carried on with their blowing stuff up and setting off fireworks and generally running around and rampaging because that's what we've seen the left do. We saw it in the United States. We see it here in France. Um, these people are very interested in, well, behaving like that. Uh, and, and we've seen it over and over again. Now, you can clearly see that Marine Le Pen's party got 37% of the vote. Now, what did she stand for? First, they didn't want any of this unconstrained migration. You can call it immigration, but it's not really immigration. It's, it's migration where, again, it's not a vetting process. Immigration is a very careful vetting process. Hey, we need more structural engineers. Let's allow some in from some other country, right? Hey, we need more carpenters. Let's allow carpenters in. Migration is just, hey, there's a boatload of people. Here they are. And there's no vetting. And then you just let them in. And that leads to the second plank of Marine Le Pen's party, which was let's put French people first. Why would we put more money and effort towards migrants than we do our own people? Let's put our own people first. Of course, this is anathema to the socialists, to the communists, because they actually don't like you having a culture. They don't want you having a sense of identity. 
And so what they're more interested in is breaking that identity down. And a surefire way to do that is to bring in a lot of people without that identity and then shower them with all the love and all the resources and all the money while shortchanging your own people. In fact, to really rub it in, if you're on that far left, you know what you do? You place onerous taxes on your own people to help support all of your programs that you would have out there. And of course, that's what we see. Let me pull this up very quickly. This would be do, 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 do. Where is it? Probably. Nope, not here. Not here. Here it is. Uh, look at this. So France's leftists, who are some of the key winners in this particular election they just had, include a 90% top marginal income tax rate. And you're thinking, wow, would that apply to billionaires? Sure. But actually, you don't have to make it all the way to billionaire status. Quote, France's leftist alliance would raise the top marginal income tax rate to 90% if it were to take over government following legislative elections that run through July 7th. And they did just get the 180 seats, so they are now in the driver's seat. Eric Coquerel provided the figure in an interview in CNews Television saying that the new Popular Front's proposal, that's not like the, that sounds like a Monty Python's get, new Popular Front, not, not the, not the front, not the popular, not the front new popular people's Judeas, <laughs> whatever. The new Popular Front's proposal would pass muster with French course and wouldn't be considered confiscatory because wouldn't be considered confiscatory because it would only have an impact on the highest portion of a taxpayer's income. It's not confiscatory. It's just we're going to take everything above this level. What is that level? It turns out the top rate would apply to taxable income over 411,000 euros. That's $440,000. So obviously what's going to happen is everybody who's successful, they've worked hard, they've built a business for themselves, a medium size or a large business. These are your most productive people. And of course, you know, you think, oh, it's so unfair that they earn that much money. But very typically, these people who are earning that level of money, these are your most highly trained people who have who literally trade their time, their lives, their life force for improving the world or trying to make things better or adding to the economic equation. Of course, this is unacceptable to people on the left. They like to take wealth and redistribute it. It's unfair that other people have more, but it never occurs to the left that the way they could have more would be to work harder. It just, it's not a thing that occurs to them. Uh, instead, they're jealous of people who earn more. And so the way you solve that jealousy is you apply a 90% top rate. So that would all, imagine that. Why would you work, why, why would you even bother working beyond 411,683 euros if you knew 90% of it was going to go to the French government? Um, currently, the income tax rate in France tops out at a measly 177,000 euros. By the way, you think that sounds like a lot of money. Maybe it does, but it's not if you're trying to make a life out of it in a major city. If you're in uh, Bordeaux, if you're in Paris, if you're in Lyon. Um, it just like it's, it's like saying is if you were in San Francisco, you were in New York. It's very, very hard to, to get by. I mean, that's not. You're not. When did it become true that a government felt like it had the right to come and take half of your salary, half your income? And by the way, that's just the income tax rate, right? On top of that, they still have sales taxes, the so-called VAT, and then they've got other taxes and fees and levies. That's just the starting point. So, so at what point did a government say, you know, you owe us more than half of your productive life output? I don't know. Doesn't make a lot of sense to me, but you show me the incentive. I will show you the outcome. I guarantee this is a ruinous policy for France. This will diminish, not enhance the country. You run this policy long enough, a decade later, you wake up and you go, why is our country suck so bad? Why do we not have any dynamism? Where did all of our most productive people go? Now, we saw the same thing um, here in, let me find, get back here. This, we saw the same thing happen in the UK, a very similar kind of a, a story where, um, do, 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 hold on. Oh yeah. I like how Mike Benz put it here, uh, around the Fran French thing. Wow. It's district one from hunger games against the whole rest of the colonies. And it shows here who voted for who and the, uh, Marine Le Pen winning the majority in most of the districts most of um, the areas, but uh, it's a representative system. So it's not, doesn't, it's not exactly like that. A, a democratic system would be winner takes all that, that it, this isn't one of those. It's a representative system.
At any rate, in in the UK, Labour somehow manages to get 33.8% of the vote. And Labour, by the way, in the UK is is uh, who votes on block for Labour. Well, that would be the Pakistanis. Uh, there's a couple million of them living in the UK, and they vote almost entirely as a block for Labour. I just learned. And so they Labour gets 33.8% of the vote while yielding a strong majority in Parliament. I'm not sure 33.8% qualifies as a very strong mandate, which is how Starmer, the new UK PM, has just put it. We have a very strong mandate. And what's weird is they have 33.8% of the vote, but somehow that translates into 65% of the seats. Labour has 412. Next closest, Conservative at 121. You can see the vast difference between those two numbers. And they picked up 214, right? Uh, and, and that's just an astonishing change. Conservatives, obviously, losing out big, losing a huge, huge chunk of seats here. And then it goes down to 72 seats for a Liberal Democrat. And then it just falls off very rapidly to just meaningless noise down here. Uh, Sinn Féin, Scottish National Party, Reform UK, Green Parties, etc. So that's interesting. How do you get 33.8% of the vote and 65% of the seats? Shenanigans. Uh, this is just something that we're going to see a lot. And by the way, you can expect that the communist adjacent governments of Canada and Australia are going to be paying very close attention to how you pull off these sorts of shenanigans here because power likes to stay in power. And that's it. This is all a power play at this point in time. My concern, as you know, is that the people who want the power are really not the people who should have the power at this point in time. They're childish. They're immature. They can't even make like simple reasoned arguments anymore. Oh, we should vaccinate six month olds. Right. Or, you know, it's just bizarre how, how poorly trained these people are. And we need adult leadership right now. We need people who can add two plus two, come up with four. We need people who can navigate through some of the most uncertain times. And I'll show you why I think they are behaving the way they're behaving. Let me pull up mm, this. Okay. Let's go here real quick. So look, prosperity, everything that we need, you know, when you talk about why people want to um, get ahead in life and, and what we care about most, obviously we really care about our own pocketbook. We care about our own prosperity. We care about what we're going to be able to leave behind for our children. And obviously our prosperity comes off of this chart, because if you've been following my work, you know that energy is the economy. This is where all of our prosperity came from, is that rising, nonlinear, exponentially shaped chart there where we're just consuming more and more and more energy across all different sources. And of course, the most abundant source, the thing most responsible would be the fossil fuels represented by coal and oil and gas. That's natural gas, those, those big blobs right there, okay? So that's these things right up through here. Well... The story we've been told, though, and you're getting this in the UK, you're getting this in France, you're getting this in Germany, you're getting this across all of the Western world, is that somehow we're going to make the transition over to things like wind and solar. And that's where we're going to just shift our prosperity over to these other forms of energy. And we've been trying that, and it hasn't been working. And of course, the people are getting poorer and poorer and poorer in all the countries that have tried this. And here's why. Because if you really look at this, let's take out wind and just strip it out here so we can look at it individually. That's wind. That's wind. Same chart as before. Nothing's been changed except all the other colors have been taken away. So it's more obvious what's been going on. Yes, wind is now growing very, very large, but it's growing very, very much off of a very tiny beginning percentage. So it can look like a large increase, but when you strip it away and just throw show it in, re in representation compared to all the other forms of energy, you can see that wind is basically, it's negligible at this point. I'm not saying it's completely unimportant. But it is not in the driver's seat. So the you just wind can't run anything. Why? Because some days the wind doesn't blow. It's just how it is. It has an important niche role, but it's not center stage. Same thing when we go to solar. It's even more negligible. I mean, that's solar. Listen, I got solar on my house. It has a niche role to play. It's, it's very important in that niche role, but it's a niche role. It is not a center role. Well... The more we push down towards things like wind and solar and the more we try and push away from things like fossil fuels without a proper plan, the more we run into trouble and the more we find out that people are experiencing this life as life is getting harder and harder for them. OK, and that's exactly what's happening. So let me come back here and show you this one other 
So what is it like to be in the UK? Why would the why is the UK voting the way it's voting? Why are people so unhappy all across France and Germany and the UK and all of that? The reason why is because of this chart right here. This shows Britain's economy compared to Germany, then the Netherlands, then the US. And so you what we're looking at here is this is forty thousand dollars. So that's subnational GDP, gross domestic product per capita. And it's what's called PPP, that's Purchasing Power Parity Adjusted. Because, you know, they, they use pounds over here. They don't use dollars, right? And they use euros here, not dollars. But when you compare them all, and then you ask, hey, you know what? what can, how much does a Big Mac cost in each of these four areas? How much does a house cost? That's called Purchasing Power Parity. So they add it all up, normalize it out. And it turns out that the national average income of somebody in the UK, and this is an average. So you got a few very, very rich people dragging their, you know, they're doing real well. And then everybody else is doing average, not as well. Okay. The national average is about 45,000 US dollars in the UK for an average income per capita. And that compares to about Alabama in the United States. And if you strip out London, which is way up here, dragging everything up because London is a powerhouse financial center where obviously they print money and hand it out to themselves and call themselves rich, uh, which, of course, steals from everybody down here. The If we take out the London region, it turns out the average person in the UK has a living standard the same as the lowest state in the United States, that's Mississippi. So when you think all those posh British accents and you think, oh, you know, those wonderful TV shows would show everybody driving around in Rolls Royces and having butlers and all that, the truth is that the average person in the UK has to scrabble along the same as the average person in Mississippi. Now, this leads to all sorts of different election outcomes, particularly when you have a program running in your country that says, you know what, you know what we really need to bring to our people with an average purchasing power parity income of a Mississippian? You know what we need? Let's, I know, let's bring in a lot of people who are migrating from really poor areas of the world, maybe don't share our culture, who are going to need a lot of resources to help them get up and off and um, on the way. And that's exactly what's been happening. The UK has a serious productivity problem right now, but that's because when you look at this, obviously, when you bring in people who don't know your language, who are unskilled, it's not going to really add to your productivity much. It's going to drag it down. And so here you can see net migration. Here's emigration. Here's immigration. So net migration is in purple. You can see here that this was sort of trundling along at about the zero mark for years and years and years, many decades. Then it finally pops up here into positive territory until 2020 when it absolutely screams higher. This is part of the program, and this is causing people to vote differently. In France, it's very easy to now feel like you're no longer a French person in France, that you were actually in North Africa, in certain parts of Paris. There are other parts. I mean, it's just it's getting very, very rapidly changed, and this is creating election shifts and and power of political shifts and the one thing that the french can't stomach of course it, who are the head of the whole political structure is they can't seem to stomach what would happen if they lost power so they shenaniganed their own elections and unfortunately for them they swept in a bunch of far left socialists and communists into power which guaranteed is not going to make the people of france wealthier it's just not how it works i know it sounds good all you young Parisians there chanting about those anti-fascists, it sounds wonderful, but it just isn't. It never is, and it just won't be, because you can never, ever, ever increase the wealth of a nation by taking from some to give to others. It's just not how it works. Wealth comes from real people working hard and adding to the overall landscape. It doesn't come from taking from some people who are productive and giving it to other people who typically aren't. That's not how it works. But of course, France gets to figure that out all on its own now. We're going to see shenanigans like that coming to the U.S. Now I'm going to turn to uh, the rest is for my subscribers back at Peak Prosperity. I, now, listen, you know what happens back at Peak Prosperity. I get to give you my actual unfiltered thoughts where we can have free and open conversations. As you know, everything out here in public is, of course, trolled and filtered and suppressed and censored. All of that stuff is still true out here, and it's going to get worse through this election season because the power structure gets very, very touchy uh, during these election seasons. So 
to give you my full unadulterated thoughts there's a lot more going on and by the way really huge things happen this weekend so that's back at peak prosperity join me back there if you're a subscriber everybody else hope you enjoyed this watch out for your own election shenanigans good chance they won't won't do anything good for your country all right until next time bye-bye <laughs>